no car this week, so if you're not into planes, you can bugger off and we'll see you next time. And now for something completely different. You got missiles here. You got sidewinders. Can I buy one? No, they cost three hundred thousand dollars each, and we're pointing towards that fishing boat over there. No, don't. Don't make a video. Here we go. Don't. don't. Oh. Welcome to today's episode of Incarnation Australia. I'm with Mark. No, I'm not. No, you're not with Mark. I'm not with Mark. Oh my God, we've known each other for thirty-five years, and you still can't remember my name. Mark's God. bailed out today. He, a, he hasn't got the appropriate license. B, he's a bit afraid, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Mark, pardon up, Princess. <laughs> he said you were stupid, but that was for getting in the yeah. plane, not just no. normally. This is not a car at all. Hey, Pete, this isn't a car at all. This is this is not a car. Yes, it is. You took. I suppose it is. It's got an engine up front. It's got wheels. Oh yeah, it's a car. Most cars I get in have got four wheels. Yeah, but you know, Stu, I can cruise at 300 kilometres an hour and not lose my licence. You can't do that in your Porsche, yeah. can you? No, <laughs> no. And oh look, is that your Spitfire as well? No. no that's just a, that's a little pretend one. I like it. The guy that flies it just loves it. So today we're not flying in this thing. Clearly, because that motor looks... That, that's, that's a very good deduction. Yes. Yes. And we're not flying in this thing because it's only got one, one seat. One seat, yes. We're flying in Fang. Oh, Fang. Is that what its name is? It's definitely called Fang. Let's have a look at Fang. Oscar Romeo Foxtrot. Anything that's called experimental, I worry about. That... Well, every, every plane starts off experimental. The difference with experimental and certified is basically the certified have gone through the equivalent of the crash test dummies. Hmm. And uh, but these at the same time still have to go through the drop tests and quite a considerable amount of testing. Mm -hmm. And when they're built by an amateur, like you can buy this as a kit, there's a whole process of building that has to be certified as you go along. So it's not a free lunch, you just can't build it and get away with it. So people will come in and inspect it, you've got to keep a builder's log. And I get this maintained by the licensed aeronautical maintenance engineers and they themselves have said what a beautifully built plane it is. It's, they, they, because the people that make these things, they're really anally retentive OCD type people. Are they? And quite often these things are built far better than the certified planes because yep. people just get so anal about it. Yeah. I'd like to introduce you to Fang. It does look a bit small. That's so sexy looking. It is, isn't it? And you got an iPad over there, just in case you want to play a bit of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, just a four-point harness. No crutch strap? There is a crutch yes. strap. Yes, yeah, the crutch strap. Okay. I just told you all of that, and you obviously don't listen to no. me, do you? No, It's don't. like we're married. Let me's, let me's recording. It was recording. Oh, God, no. Just like being in a racing car. How did I say? It's like a racing car. It's small, fast, and uncomfortable. I have done acrobatics in an, in an extra 300. With the Australian Richard Ackland, the Australian acrobatic oh, champion, wow. and, we, and we pulled eight Gs and, and two and a half negative. Be a prop. Okay, to give you a bit of an idea, moving across there, all of my fuses. Here, this is my engine management system. So you can see I've got my um, liters per hour pounds per square inch for the fuel, temperature and pounds per square inch for the oil and also my electrical system. Up here, cylinder head temperatures, exhaust gas temperatures, and you use those particularly when you're managing your fuel flows. Uh, because you can, if you try and lean off, you can end up with pre-ignition, and basically you can screw your engine pretty quick. They're not just like a car where you turn them on and off you go. Yeah, you, you've, you've got to pay attention to it. GPS 146, the comp system. We've got a secondary um, for VOR and uh, ILS and it's also a secondary navigation so I've got redundancy in both radios and in my instrument approaches. Below it is the autopilot, below that is ADS-B which puts out a signal which goes to other planes and it gets broadcast so I could be in the middle of nowhere and air traffic control knows exactly what I'm doing. So no flying down the main street of Brisbane. Okay, they'll go, oi Pete what do you think you're doing? Yeah my uh, track and so this top one is slaved you can see to the GPS so if we're actually on uh, slave to the GPS track that I've got entered into it, yep. that will indicate my deviation from it. Nice. Altitude, vertical speed indicator, how fast I'm going up and down. Yep. A gyro compass, 
One of the advantages of the gyro compass is that when you're turning, a magnetic compass has got lag, and so you can think you're turning onto your bearing, but really you've overshot it or you've undershot it. This, because it's running on a gyro, doesn't have the same sort of lag. Okay. Artificial horizon, which you need for uh, IFR, that shows uh, basically your wings, um, your angle of climb, and it's always right, and you're wrong if you disagree. Archer ground, Oscar Romeo, Foxtrot RV7, 2POB, VFR, uh, received off Foxtrot on the southern apron for eastern departure. Uh, request taxi. OK, Oscar Romeo, Foxtrot, uh, inbound traffic is a 152 on Echo, give way to that one, and then taxi to the holding point, of Bravo 2, runway 28 right. Taxi to holding point, a Bravo 228 right, give way to 152 on Bravo, Oscar Romeo, Foxtrot. Oscar Romeo, Foxtrot, distance remaining from Bravo 2 is 1020 metres. Will that be acceptable or will you be looking for an inner and backtrack for that little bit? Oh no, that's just fine. Thank you, Oscar Romeo, Foxtrot. Oscar Romeo, Foxtrot, yes. They're offering me one kilometre. Yeah, this thing takes off in 200 metres. I've learned, always ask questions, because at times I've thought, oh, I should know this, and that's when I've screwed up. And it's better to ask questions and then think you're a knob than you prove it. It goes down and joins at Bravo 2. I've got zero hours, you've got 1,100. Yeah. And I already know my They say the danger point is um, around about 400 hours because people start thinking they know something. The thing is, with all of the training I did for my commercial pilot's licence, I realise how much I don't know compared to these really skilled pilots. I think you've always got to be modest about your abilities. This is Bravo 2 here? Yep. Copy that. God, you don't know how to fly and you're starting to tell me what to do. Jeez, you're an, <laughs> you must be an instructor. Throttle up. Thousand feet. Lean it off. Slight climb. Lean it off. Revs come back. Twenty four hundred. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to basically. We're just going to cruise out. We're not going to try and go too fast. Yep. One hundred thirty knots. Two hundred thirty k's an hour. Now you can see here. This is our um, airspace. Yep. We're coming to the three mile limit. I can now go up to fifteen hundred. Yep. Uh, feet. We won't particularly. And you can yep. see I'm limited to two thousand feet there. Yep. And over here, this is three thousand five hundred. Yep. And we're going to head up uh, Stradbroke Island, up there. We'll dodge the rain. Yep. Nice job so far. So we're flying due east at the moment. From Brisbane, that means we're heading to the coast. Yeah. So when you want to start viewing, I'll, I'll tip it over and we'll start... It's recording now. Oh, is it? Okay. Yep. So there we go. Look at that. Nothing but ground. Woo! So that's like a rate two turn. You're really cranked over there. Those are all of the prawn farms over there. Yep. They're no longer going to China, so they're ours for Christmas. So I go flying quite often, and the workload is really pretty high as you're, you're starting off. And yep. then by the time I level out and everything relaxes, I look out and all of a sudden I just feel so privileged. I'm sure everybody down there that gr is growing weed is running around now trying to cover it up because there's this really suspicious pain circling over their house. I see there's a stash right there. Do you? Yeah. Hey, buddy. Uh, that guy pointing a shotgun at us. Yeah, that, that, is that what that is? And when you look at the map, Fraser Island, Stradback Island, is where Australia starts turning west. These keep on going north. And that's why we get these sand islands. But they're very fragile because the reason you can get lakes is that the organic matter over a period of time has created the seal. And uh, then the water's been able to pond on top of it. So when some dickheads first came to explore these islands for minerals, they'd drill a hole through the bottom of the lake, thinking what's underneath. And basically it was like pulling the plug and the, the lake's drained. You're a font of information, aren't you? I did all of that at university. Okay, time for a quick quiz. On top, the Vans RV7A. Below, my friend Chris Matheson's nutty top fuel nitro motorcycle. First question, which do you think is heavier? No, you got that wrong. They're almost exactly the same weight. Okay, next one, pretty obvious. Which do you think is faster? Nope, you got that wrong as well. Matho's bike will easily top 400 k's an hour in six or seven seconds. What about horsepower? Okay, you've cottoned on by now. That's no contest. Uh, 1,000 feet above populous areas and 500 feet above non-populous areas. So We're just above the height that you and I fly our drones. Yeah, that's, that's why drones are limited to 400 feet, because the lower limit for um, aircraft is 500 feet. People often say, how high, how high can your drone go? And I say, 
sort of runs out of battery, probably 8, 10,000 feet, um, which is not where you want to put it, uh, but I fly to 400 max. Ferry coming into Stradbroke Island. A whole bunch of cars on it. See that? Yeah, absolutely. You say something went wrong, you always keep in the mind that you might have an engine failure, so you, you do keep in the back of your mind of where I could possibly land. Now, there's nowhere over there that we could land. We'd have to ditch in the water, which is not very nice. You haven't got a lot of options. There's not no. many plan B options here. So, Peter, a little bit of talk about this aircraft, this car we're driving. Yep. 200 horsepower, flat four motor. Is it turbocharged or is it uh, just... No, no, it's just... Um, normally aspirated? Yep, normally aspirated. It's uh, fuel injected, which gives you much better ability to lean it off. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing what you learn. There's so much that you don't learn as you become a pilot because there is so much to learn and then you start learning incrementally after that. And I think it's good to go back and go back to your instructors after a period of time, a couple of years, because when you let loose, you're flying by yourself most of the time and all you do is self-reinforce your own mistakes. A pretty cruisy 115 knots, which is around 200, 210 k's an hour. Yeah, we're probably on about 40% power. Yeah, we just, well, that's the way we like it. We just potter along. Right, so the reason you got this aircraft, Peter, your work involved going to regional places all over the country training people. Yeah, and, and, was, and you found you were doing a lot of miles in the car. Uh, it was, and I was actually, you know, by the time you miss a route, by the time a truck driver decides he's tired and cranky, by the time you pass the people picking up their children from school and that's the only time they drive, it, it was quite nerve-wracking in the end. And um, so I took up the flying and it just cut down the travel and also made it a hell of a lot of fun. Instead of spending three, three days to go and see a client, I'd be down and back in the same day and having a glass of wine at 6.30 at night. I don't know if it really increased my income by having that extra time, but I'll tell you what, it certainly added to um, lifestyle. Look at that, everybody. Amazing aircraft, our experimental aircraft. Yeah. So this, I mean, apart from your $50,000 dash, this has got, you got missiles here. You got sidewinders. Are they an option, are they? Do they work? Can I fly or can I fly one? No, they cost $300,000 each, and, and we're pointing towards that fishing boat over there. No, don't, don't. Don't make it, here we go. That's, that's... Oh. Um, oh, shit. I think, yeah. Let's go over there now. Let's go there. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> I did this with this mate of mine all around um, America. We just behaved like little twats. It was just lovely. This video proudly sponsored by the Raytheon Corporation. And there's something nice too about taking on a challenge. When, when you and I were at uni, we'd read a page of text and we'd memorise it. And then over a period of time as our careers progressed, we still think we're pretty shit hot because we know so much. But what we've done is build incrementally on what we've learned. But when you go to something completely new, like flying, I'd read a page of text. I'd have to read it three times before I really started to, for it to sink in. And it was big writing and had lots of diagrams. And it was an incredible challenge later on to start something so new, so outside of your um, um, comfort zone. It's a terrific plane. It really, it holds us. Yeah. Okay, we're, still, we're climbing at 1,500 feet a minute. We're still doing 130 knots on the climb. It's 230 k's an hour while we're climbing. Yeah, you, you don't have to buy a plane as spec as this. I, I bought it because of the miles I needed to do and the performance I wanted. Yep. But you can actually go and buy a $25,000, $35,000 plane. It doesn't go very fast, but it gets you up in the air and around the place. So this plane's about the same price as a medium-sized BMW, yeah. an M3. And what they mine is rutile, which sometimes if you go on the beach you see this black stuff in the sand. And rutile's used in paint, I think, white paint. The guy that owns the Spitfire, I took him down to pick it up. He, he's a check captain for Virgin Airlines, and he reckons that I've got more instrumentation in this than some of the 737s <laughs> he flies. <laughs> what a treat. Look at that incredible surf. And um, what's this button do? It's... Oh, that's the ejector seat. Oh, Ooh. see you, Stu. <laughs> We've already done that gag. If you haven't seen that gag, look at the Porsche 944 clip opener. Well, Mark did say, you're a braver man than I am. Because when I took up flying, my parents were against it, everybody was against it. But every time there's a plane crash, it's on the news. Mm. Would you drive if you saw every car crash, if it was on the news? We wouldn't have anything other than car crashes on the news. Yep. And then it's not only when it crashes, that then they do an investigation into every plane crash. And everybody reports on this plane crash again. So people generally see double the amount of plane crashes that they are. Yep. 
And when you look at the fatality rate compared to the number of flights and distances, it's mm. an incredibly safe way to go. All oh, right. Well, you've, you've cheated me up no you. Yes. yes. And oh. I've got no intention of dying. You know, I don't take you up there so that we're going to die. So when people say, oh, you're really brave, it's just that they don't know. Um, but the majority of accidents, 80% of aircraft accidents are due to pilot error, yep. not due to the plane. Mm. And a lot of that is fuel starvation because you've got some tight ass that thinks I'm going to save money by buying my fuel where it's cheaper. My attitude is, is that I don't care what the fuel costs because if I'm coming in to an airport and my fuel gauges are getting low, I'm getting really nervous and the flight's mm. not comfortable anymore. This is a car review channel, so let's look at the costs in car terms. You could do the whole thing. You could get a cheap plane, get a recreational license and be floating around in the sky for well under 100,000 bucks, so Peter tells me. But this aircraft costs about $180,000 Australian, about the same as a new BMW M3, but without the horrible buck teeth. First expense, you've got to keep it somewhere and hangar space is quite expensive. It will need regular servicing, like a car, every year. But every 2,000 hours, the engine has to be rebuilt to as good as new standard. That can cost up to 40,000 bucks. Sounds like a lot, but think of it this way. You've done almost half a million kilometers. That would not be unusual for an exotic car. Fuel economy is around 30 liters per hour at 300 k's an hour cruising, depending upon the altitude. The higher you fly, the better it gets. So that's around 24 miles per gallon, or 10 liters per 100 k. That's better than a whole lot of sports cars. Insurance, you better allow 5,000 a year minimum. Now a recreational license is not hard to get and only a few grand, but for a full commercial license like Peter has, you better put aside a few years and 100,000 bucks for all that training. A whole lot of study, then exams, annual medicals, flight reviews, that kind of thing. Now if you're thinking how nice it would be to make a career as a pilot, now is probably not a great time. Thousands of experienced airline pilots are out of work. What's more, it's like being a musician. The industry knows that a lot of people are in aviation because they love it, so the pay when you start out is terrible. The going rate for a freshly minted commercial pilot is around 22 bucks an hour. You would be probably better off buying that BMW and using it as an Uber. It was a fabulous experience. We had a zippy little sports machine. What did we get today? A bit of flight instruction, some safety and technical insights, a bit of homespun philosophy and chit chat, and a Queensland tourism ad that Scotty from marketing would be proud of. And proof also that you're never too old to try new stuff. So no excuses, get out there. So who knows, maybe your next sports car will have wings. I would like to say a huge thank you to Pete for being such a fabulous host. And Mark and I will see you next week. Oh hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.